What up there guys, this is Jugget82, and this is a video response to Maximum RD about backwards compatibility, good or bad, basically. And for me, backwards compatibility was an issue that came up to me a couple years ago when I was deciding whether or not to get a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360. Um, the PlayStation 3 for me was more of a rule of thumb to pick because on the simple fact that on the original Xbox system, I actually owned one, and I really just couldn't get into the system that much. But the PlayStation 1 and 2 and, and so forth, those were systems that I was more equipped to. Not to say that I'm a fanboy, but that was a system that I was pretty much equipped to playing and doing and having fun with, put it like that. Um, I ended up getting a PlayStation 3, but before I got a PlayStation 3, a friend of mine wanted to buy my PlayStation 2. So I was like up in the air about whether or not to sell it, but then again, I knew that they were compatible, uh, backwards compatible PlayStation 3s because the PlayStation 3 models themselves are like the 20 gig, 40 gig, 60 gig, 80 gig uh, models and whatnot. Now, I knew that the 80 gig and I believe the 40 gig models could play PlayStation 1 as well as PlayStation 2 games. The other models could only play PlayStation 1. And uh, through like some kind of emulation thing, you could uh, play your PlayStation 2 games on the other ones. But with me, I decided to get the 80 gig model, and I thought it was a very, very wise investment because that way I could still keep some of my PlayStation 1 games and a bunch of my PlayStation 2 games and still be able to play them on one system. Now, that sounds like it's a good thing, but there's a big question about that. The big question about that is the fact that when you put certain games in, they don't actually have the same look. And, 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 and you can ask anybody that has a backwards compatible PlayStation 3 is if you play a PlayStation 2 game, they have like a jittery kind of look to them. And the graphics look like they've been dumbed down a little bit because if you play them on the original PlayStation 2 itself, they don't look like that. And I've noticed that. But with smoothing, and smoothing is an option you can use on your PlayStation 3 to smooth the graphics out and make them look a little bit more crisp. And, um... It works a little bit, but there was a couple other things I had to tweak with it. PlayStation 1 games, the PlayStation 3 doesn't truly do them any justice because the PlayStation 1 games are very, very jacked up a little bit. They don't, if you if you play it on original PlayStation 1 or even a PlayStation 2, and that's what I liked about the PlayStation 2 console. The PlayStation 2 itself was backwards compatibility, fully backwards compatible, and it looked like it didn't take anything away from PlayStation 1 games because of the hardware. Now, many people will say, well, companies like Sony, they look at the fact that if they keep backwards compatibility in those systems, they're going to pretty much hurt the actual ability of the console itself to play the, 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 the system games that it's meant to play for. The PlayStation 3, on the other hand, like I say, do I feel the PlayStation 3 graphics for PlayStation 3 games are terrible? Hell no. They're amazing to me. But I don't know. Maybe if uh, I had a PlayStation Slim, I could compare and contrast between them. But the PlayStation 3 itself, 80 gig model, had a lot of you know stuff in it to be able to play all those particular game system games. Now, when I was a kid, I remember I had a uh, Super Nintendo. Before the Super Nintendo even came out, I was thinking, oh, the Super Nintendo, it's, it's going to be able to play Nintendo and the Super Nintendo games, right? <clears throat> Boy, was I wrong. But it was a situation where, I, I, I mean, I guess it's more of a situation where people who like backwards compatibility basically have the convenience of slimming down or being able to just narrow their systems down into one. And that's understandable because you might not want to have a whole bunch of game systems scattered around where your TV at. You want to have just one system you can go to to play a certain multitude of games you have. Now, the thing about it is, it's kind of like the Xbox 360. When the Xbox 360 first came out, there were a bunch of games that were not playable with the 360. And Microsoft pretty much had to, um, you know send patches and this and that so you can play certain games and there were some actual big name titles that were not playable at the time when the Xbox 360 was released that many fans were like what the fuck I can't play this game it, it was a it was a big the one of the biggest get hits on the Xbox the original Xbox and you know Microsoft immediately jumped to the gun and had to had to fix that shit because 
people were not willing to issue out that much money to buy a system that could not play any of the actual games they still owned. And that's what's going on with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox 720, blah, 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 whatever. The PlayStation 4 is, is saying that it won't be backwards compatible with the PS3 and stuff like that. But then again, think about this. If the PlayStation 4 came out and it could play PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and it's, of course, it's actual games, everybody would buy that motherfucker because they would be like, damn, man, I could go on sell my PS3 and I just have that one system. But you have to look at the long run of the effect. I have a PlayStation 3. The PlayStation 2 games on it don't look as crisp or they don't look as they would on a PlayStation 2. It's the same with PlayStation 1 games. Matter of fact, on PlayStation 1 games, they look jagged. Unless you download a PlayStation 1 game off the PlayStation Network that has some little bit differences to it than actually putting a disc in the system, it's not the same. It's pretty much you would have to have the PlayStation system, the original PlayStation 1, to play on PlayStation 1 games, or either the PlayStation 2, because the PlayStation 2 does the emulation of PlayStation 1 games perfectly. And that system right there, you know, it's, it's really decent. I'm talking about the Fat Boy. I don't know about the PlayStation 2 Slim, but I'm talking about the Fat Boy. Uh, PlayStation 2 did it perfect. Uh, and like I'm saying, backwards compatibility, the answer is I'm all for it if it's done right. If it's, it's, if it's a situation where you think, oh man, like the Wii, or the Wii can play GameCube and uh, also play the Wii games. That's great, but that's that's, that's kind of like the weird, weirdest thing if you think about it. Let's say you had a Nintendo system, the next Nintendo system, which is the Wii U. What about if they announced the Wii U could play Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, GameCube, and Wii games, and Wii U games, and that damn system would sell off the rack. I mean, people would be in droves, but this is what the, the game companies have done for us. They've come up with this situation where you could buy games for your system and download them to the system. So that's why the Wii has the ability you could get any game from the Nintendo's library and you could put it on your system like that. The same thing was going on with the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. With the PlayStation Network, you could download PlayStation 1 games as well as PlayStation 2 games. You could even download Japanese games that were never even released in North America. But... Some people say the physical copy is very important. It is. I mean, I have the actual physical game and knowing that you can put it in a system and play it. Uh, but, you know, backwards compatibility, it's it's like a, a question that's thrown up in the air about systems. It's been systems all the way back to, like like um, uh, Rob said about the uh, Atari 7200, which it could play all those systems, uh, 22, 2600, as well as, uh, did I say 7200, 7800? I don't know, but anyway, just like that, uh, but it's a preference. If you want to have a system that plays all these different games, you're going to subtract a lot from that system itself, the hardware-wise, because you got to be able to have it where it can play the system games, the games from the past that were on that original system, because then you're also taking away from what you could do with the current games that's already made for the system, but... You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, I'm all for it. Backwards compatibility. Backwards compatibility, if done right. But yeah, this has been a video response to Maximum RD about backwards compatibility. I will have a link to that video in this video. But this is Jugget82, signing off.